grade sevens. This is Natural Sciences and I'm Helen and today we are focusing on separating mixtures. So over the last few lessons we've looked at what a mixture is and we've looked at different kinds of mixtures. We've seen that a mixture is when we take different substances and we combine them together physically. We don't join them together chemically. We don't make completely new substances. All we've done is put different substances together in a mix. And if we've put them together in a mix, but we haven't bonded them together, that means that we should be able to separate the substances that were combined together in the mixture. And that is going to be the focus of our next few lessons, separating mixtures into their component substances. So let's start by learning about different methods of physically separating the components of mixtures. You need to remember once again that science happens in your everyday lives and maybe you just don't recognize it because we are in the business of separating mixtures all the time in our everyday lives. Now these examples that I'm giving you are very obvious examples but they underline the idea that we can separate mixtures. So somebody gives your mother a basket of fruit. You may love apples but not really enjoy grapes so much so you may physically separate the mixture of fruit in the basket by picking out the apples that you prefer. When you are in a shop and you have to pay for goods, you have to sort out the different kinds of coins in order to pay for your goods. So working out change is a very important sorting and separating out of a mixture that we do every day. When you select colors, in order to make a picture and do an artwork and make the, the, the artwork have the colors that you want it to have in it, you are sorting out your crayons. This kind of sorting happens on a much larger level as well, where we have dump sites and places that are called landfills where things have been discarded or thrown away. We often see people who separate out maybe the metal goods from plastic goods in order to recycle them. They'll separate or sort out the glass from the mixture. They'll even separate different kinds of metals from each other in order to be able to recycle those materials. So Sorting and separating mixtures isn't something that is just done with you in your everyday life. It is also something that's very important in the environment. Now, the most simple kind of sorting of a mixture is called hand sorting. And I think that you have been involved in hand sorting on many different occasions. It's the easiest and the most simple way to separate a mixture. Now imagine Gogo dropped her sewing basket and all the buttons got mixed up. How can you separate this mixture by hand sorting? Well, you might want to ask Gogo how she would prefer her buttons to be sorted. And she could say to you, sort them by color which means that you're going to take all the green ones, the green buttons, and put them in one pile. You're going to take blue buttons and put them in another pile, yellow buttons, red buttons, and so on. 
What is important for you to understand from this very, very simple example is that all of these are buttons. That's our mixture. And what you are doing is separating components out of this big mixture. So that is what we mean by hand sorting. And we can do it by eye. We can see the different buttons and we can sort them out with our hands. What's another way you could sort out these buttons? Gogo wanted her sorted by color, but how else could you sort them? Have a look at the picture. Another way you could sort out these buttons is by shape. You could say that there are some round buttons, there are some triangular buttons, there are some heart-shaped buttons, and so on. So hand sorting is the simplest way that you can separate items from a mixture. Let's decide which of these mixtures are good for hand sorting. So your baby brother likes to build things out of Lego blocks. How could you sort the Lego blocks by hand? When farmers shear their sheep or cut the wool off their sheep, they throw the wool down onto the floor of the barn and thorns and pieces of grass get stuck in that wool. What is the best way for separating thorns and pieces of grass from the wool? What's the best way of sorting tiny little particles from bigger particles in a sand sample. Could you use hand sorting for that? What about mail? If you worked in the post office, could you sort the mail into maybe parcels and letters and then letters that have to go to Chuane and letters that have to go to Cape Town? Could you do that by hand? And if you wanted to take your salad dressing sample that consists of oil at the top, and we called this last lesson a suspension, and vinegar and water, if you wanted to separate those, could you pull the oil off by hand? All right, let's see what you said. Sorting Lego blocks, that's going to be a good mixture to be able to sort by hand. You might want to sort it by color or by size of blocks. Some of the blocks are squares, some of the blocks are rectangles. You might want to use your hands to sort the Lego blocks. If you have a big sample of wool and it's got some thorns and pieces of grass, twigs stuck in it, hand sorting is going to be the very best way. But when our substances are made up of much smaller particles, like the sand particles, you're going to find it very, very difficult. Unless some of the pebbles are quite large, you might be able to pick out some of the larger pebbles by hand. But then to sort the tiny grains of sand out, can you do that by hand? We need a different method of sorting. Hand sorting is not going to work for separating sand particles. What about mail? Now there are machines that can be used to sort mail items, but long ago there weren't machines. People had to sort mail items by hand. So that's something that can be done by hand. Do you think you could use your hands to separate the oil from the vinegar and water in your salad dressing. You know what, I think if you tried to do that, all that would happen is that you would end up very messy, with very oily fingers, and you'd, you'd have a mess. So please don't try and separate oil from water using your hands. So we see that hand sorting works for some mixtures, but not for all mixtures. And this is what we're going to do over our next few lessons. We're going to look at different kinds of mixtures and we're going to see what kind of separation method 
suits what we're looking at. So we've decided here, hand sorting is very simple. It's a very easy way of sorting a mixture. But it's important with hand sorting that your items are large enough. The thorns in the wool, you can see, you can physically use your hands to sort. But we can see that other mixtures are going to need other methods of separation. So let's have a further look. Let's look at something that goes a little more specific in terms of small items. And this thing, this process, this method is called sieving. All right, it might be spelt as if you pronounce it siving, but the word is sieving. And the item that we use or the apparatus that we use is a sieve. Now, this is going to be a method that we can use to sort pebbles from sand particles or we've already got our sorted out piles of different seeds but can you imagine if all of these seeds were mixed together a good way of sorting them we could combine hand sorting for some of the larger seeds and then the smaller items we could sieve so these seeds that are very small could be sieved from the slightly larger seeds. In the same way, the pebbles and the larger pieces of sand could be sieved from the tiny, tiny grains of sand. And so whereas hand sorting wouldn't be suitable here, we can use the process of sieving. So let's learn a little more about sieving. You may be familiar with a tool from your mom's kitchen called the sieve. And you use the sieve when you are cooking. And we'll look at how we could use the sieve in cooking in a little while. But let's say we have a soil sample or a sand sample. This is also an example of a sieve. We can place our mixture into the sieve. And as you can see from the arrows, we take the sieve and we move the sieve and the small particles, the sand is going to fall through the little holes and we're going to be able to keep the larger particles in the sieve and the smaller particles will move through. Let's decide which mixtures are good for sieving. Could we separate using our sieve from the kitchen a mixture of flour and rice? Sieving will work perfectly. We will have the rice, which are the larger particles left in the sieve, and the flour would all move through to the bottom. Can we sieve leaves from a swimming pool? I'm sure you've seen a swimming pool scoop and it's got a big net here. We can use this net to scoop the leaves off the top of the surface of the swimming pool. So that would work well for cleaning your pool. But we can't really sieve tea leaves from tea. We can't sieve oil from water. We might be able to sieve out spices from the salad dressing, but we can't separate oil from water. We need yet another method of separation. So why don't you join me next time where we're going to investigate other methods of separation. But in the meantime, go and have a look at what you can hand sort around the house and what you can sieve around the house and look at the process of the actual physical separation that allows you to separate items that have particles that differ in terms of visual characteristics, color, shape, and size. More next time, but from me for today, goodbye.